Hi, everyone. Welcome to our presentation. My name is Leah Kasai. I'm Courtney Martin. And we were the research assistants with this study. We examined the implicit and explicit attitudes towards stuttering in undergraduate CSD students. So about 1% of the population stutters and 3.5% of school age children stutter. So it is very common fluency disorder amongst uh, children and communication sciences and disorder college students, which are future SLPs had the potential to work in an environment with people who stutter and change that stigma that is around stuttering. And also SLPs are the professionals who work alongside people with stuttering. So it's important for us to realize the bias we might have towards um, people who stutter. So that stigma around stuttering is usually quite negative. People who stutter experience negative responses from listeners that affect many opportunities in things such as uh, social relationships, employment, academics, and much more. In 2017, Boyle Research found that 86% of their participants believed that people who stutter were treated differently in ways that were much negative and that also 68% of participants believe that people who stutter should not be employed at jobs that require a lot of talking or jobs that have quite a high demand. So they probably would succeed better in a job that doesn't require a lot of social um, interaction like a, a janitor factory worker and also a job that doesn't have a high demand as well. So in previous studies done by Walden and Lesnar, so the study done in 2018, explicit attitudes towards stuttering were more negative for people who stutter. And their research also has shown, shown that there is an implicit bias towards stuttered speech. Um, so Walden and Lesnar in 2018, they examined the implicit and explicit attitudes for general college students. And we decided to do this research just a little bit further and examine those implicit and explicit attitudes looking among undergraduate CSD students specifically. So the goal of this study is to identify um, the any explicit and explicit attitudes CSD college students have. So our primary in questions, uh, questions included, what are CSD undergraduate implicit and explicit attitudes towards that are adverse fluent speech? And also we wanted to research, do CSD undergraduate students associate certain personality traits to fluent versus disfluent speakers? So through the Office of Institutional Analysis, Dr. Ankinen, which is the undergraduate CSD program director and outreach through social media platforms such as GroupMe and Snapchat, we recruited the participants. Um, that outreach through social media platforms were uh, done by the research assistants and through various group chats we have amongst uh, CSD students. So originally we had 44 um, CSD undergraduate students who completed the study completely, but due to Wi-Fi issues through Zoom, um, unfortunately nine of those participants, <clears throat> excuse me, had to be um, excluded. So our results are based on 35 CSD undergraduate students and 16 of those participants were first year in the program. So they're typically juniors. And then 19 of those participants were um, second years in the program. So those are our seniors in that mean age is 20.7 years old with a standard deviation of 0.915. So interestingly, 53% of participants said that they did not know a person who stutters, while 45.7% reported knowing a person who stutters, and also 97.1% of participants identified as white slash Caucasian, and 2.9% identified as other. So in the demographic survey, which I'll explain a little bit later, um, those the participants were able to report sort of their exposure to stuttering and also their knowledge related to stuttering. So as we can see in the figures, the majority of participants received um, a lecture or more on stuttering through undergraduate coursework. So that's through our the Grand Valley CSD program. Um, majority of participants reported receiving a lecture or more and also majority of participants considered themselves as somewhat knowledgeable on stuttering, whether it was through um, the coursework or their various um, other things they've learned outside of the undergraduate coursework. So majority of our participants rated that they had somewhat of a firm understanding on stuttering. So to obtain consent and uh, um, administer the demographic survey, we use REDCap, which is our online program. And um, so participants completed both forms and informed consent and demographic survey prior to our Zoom meeting. Those were all emailed to them. And then also um, in that demographic survey, this is where 
were we were able to um, get the results of participants age their race ethnicity um, what program they're in what year they are things like that as well as their exposure to coursework um, to stuttering the amount of coursework they've received on stuttering how effective and how positive that coursework was so to um, obtain our results for the implicit bias, we used the implicit association test, which is also known as the IAT. And this was created by Walden and Lesnar in 2018, and this uses Inquisit 5 software. Um, this IAT was administered through Zoom, and um, it was participants' response to fluent and third speech, which is also neutral words, positive words, and negative words. So to um, to complete this IAP participants just used and responded to the prompts using the keyboard. So after the participants read the Zoom directions, they were given remote control through Zoom. And once they began the, um, the IAP, they were given the first prompt of third speech or fluent speech. And for the prompt of the uh, non-stuttering or stuttering, this was uh, a speaker who was male and he said a word with either stuttered or fluent speech. And then these words are also neutral words. So for example, circle or building. And then as soon as participants were able to determine if it was um, either stuttering or non-stuttering, they pressed the key that it correlated with. And then after this first prompt, the second prompt was good or bad words. So good words were things like happy or joyful and bad words were like angry or upset. So participants read the words off the screen. There was no speaker for good or bad words and they would just press the, um, e, the keys that it correlated with. So if participants believe that the um, word or correlated with the category on the left, then they would press the E key. And if they believe that it belonged to the category on the right, they would press the I key. So after those two first prompts, um, both categories were combined into one, as seen as the photo on the left. And after completing this category twice, participants were given a new prompt with stuttered and fluent speech um, on different sides. So those to um, that stuttered and fluent speech switch sides. So participants were able, were given a chance to practice this new configuration. That way we can minimize errors and make sure that participants were um, felt comfortable with that new configuration. So then after that neutral and bad words was presented again, but instead of being presented by itself previously, they were presented together with that new configuration of stuttered speech and non-stuttered speech on the different sides. So we only use the third and sixth round to collect our IAT data. That way we can just ensure that um, the errors were as minimal as possible and that participants really understood it because by the third and sixth round, they were able to complete the categories more than once. So that way they had a better understanding of how the IAT worked. So if participants made a mistake, a red X would appear as seen as on the figure below. And so in order to fix the mistake, participants must select the correct response and continue. So if the red X appears and they don't press the correct key, they would not be able to move forward. And then following completion of the IAT, research assistants recorded the D scores and completion data through RUDCAP. So after the IAT was done while still on the Zoom, participants completed the self-reporting survey on their explicit attitudes for a person who stutters and a person who does not stutter. So participants were asked to rate their perceptions of the 14 characteristics um, for on a five point scale for a person with stuttering and a person who doesn't, doesn't stutter. Um, an example is seen on the right. So friendly, unfriendly, honest, or dishonest. So each participant rated their um, perceived characteristic traits for a person who stutters and a person who does not stutter. So this graph shows how the participants rated fluent speakers and people who stutter explicitly, so their conscious attitudes. This graph is based on the explicit attitude survey that Leah just talked about. Higher values indicate more positive personality traits. A zero would be neutral and a negative number would indicate a more negative attitude. This graph shows the mean across all 14 traits, which we will get to those traits on the next slide when the participant thought of a person who stutters and when the participant thought of a fluent speaker. You can see that they rated fluent speakers slightly higher than people who stutter. However, none of these values were significantly different from zero. So therefore these participants had no explicit bias towards people who stutter. And then again, positive numbers indicate a more positive attitude towards fluent speakers. For the overall implicit attitudes, 
So the unconscious attitudes, there was a mean of 0 0.068, which means there is a very slight preference towards fluent speakers. Although again, our values were not significantly different from zero. So these participants did not have any implicit bias towards or against people who stutter. So here's a graph that shows the explicit attitudes towards specific personality traits. The blue color is the rating for people who stutter and the gray color, gray color is non-stuttering. Again, a positive number indicates a positive attitude towards a trait, so more confident, more focused. A zero is, zero is neutral, so neither confident nor unconfident. And a negative number is a negative attitude, so, so very unconfident towards a trait. The traits with the little stars are the ones that we'll be looking at. They were the ones that had a significant difference in how people who stutter and people who do not stutter were evaluated. Participants rated fluent speakers as more calm, more confident, more talkative, more daring, and more of a leader than people who stutter. However, they rated people who stutter as nicer, more helpful, more honest, and more focused than fluent speakers. So some caveats and limitations. All of, our participation, all of our participants were female, which could impact finding generalizability to male CSD majors. However, the field of speech language pathology is predominantly female. Our IAT used a male speaker to produce the fluent and stuttered words. For future direction, we would like to use a female or children speakers as well. Um, unlike Walden and Lesnar, we did not measure social desirability, which may have indicated how honest participants' responses were on the explicit attitudes questionnaire. And then the final limitation of the study was that the IAT was done over Zoom, and we have not finished comparing IAT results conducted via Zoom versus in person. Our study produced two major findings, the first being that the findings indicated that CSD students do not exhibit overall implicit or explicit biases towards disfluent speech or speakers, but they do associate specific personality traits with people who stutter. The second being that participants rated fluent speakers as more calm, more confident, more talkative, more daring, and more of a leader than people who stutter. However, they rated people who stutter as nicer, more helpful, more honest, and more focused no, sorry, and yeah, and more focused than fluent speakers. Comparison of our results to those of Walden and Lesnar from 2018 indicate that CSD undergrad students exhibit less negative implicit biases towards stuttered speech than the general undergrad students that they used. That was a D score of negative 0.37. Additional aims of the study are to compare the attitudes of CSD students to those majoring in education and explore how attitudes change over time as a result of exposure to stuttering. And we are currently collecting this data. Findings from this study are expected to inform educators on how they might address and improve student attitudes towards stuttering. Presently, the association of personality traits to the fluency of a speaker appears to be the most pressing issue to address. We would like to thank you for listening to this presentation and would also like to thank GVSURs and the CSCE for supporting the study by providing remote undergrad research funding for both of us.